All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange. Today, I'm gonna take a look at this 2017 Rebel Ram, the Ram Rebel, to be more specific. And uh, it's my first pickup truck. So I've had a few requests, one or two, actually maybe more than one or two, to actually do a video review of this Ram Rebel. I've had it for a few months, so I figured this would be a good time to show you guys some of the details, talk about the reasons why, take you for a test drive with me. Let's do it. All right, so let's start with this. As everyone knows, I have a Dodge Challenger. This is a 2015 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack. Probably seen that on the channel a few times, right? So I have one of those, so that might, uh, that might lead to the question of, am I now a Mopar guy? I bought a Ram Rebel. Does that make me a Mopar guy? It really wasn't deliberate. I needed a pickup truck. So if you look back there, you'll see that Lola has a Toyota 4Runner. And I seriously considered the Tundra when I decided I wanted a pickup truck. But to be really honest with you, I really wanted a Ford Raptor. So I started looking at a Ford Raptor, knew the Tundra was out there, wound up with the Ram. So let's go through some of the reasons. Like I said, I already have the Hemi. This is a 5.7 liter, whereas the Challenger is a 6.4 liter. So this is a Ram 1500. It's actually the same color, but that's not exactly what I wanted. Um, there's like a, I don't know if it's Coyote or Desert Tan or whatever they call it. There's one of those. That to me was, uh, you know, probably the color that I would have gone for myself, but very hard to get. And another feature that I really, really wanted in this one, why I decided to buy it, Ram box. So check this out. It locks and everything. Toolboxes. And uh, what's in this one? Okay. I've got a, a machete a Gerber that I I've got a tape measure, a blanket, power cord, and things like that and, and on this side for now. I'll flip it around show you guys the other side. Hey Lola, you want to help me out with this? So check this out. Here is the uh, other RAM box. Another blanket, power pluggy stuff. I've got an emergency jump starter. Very important medical kit. I got this one from uh, Skinny Medic, so that's really cool. So, so when I was looking at this stuff, you know, I was looking at different pickup trucks. One of I, one of the things I liked about uh, Ram and the 1500 was the fact that you could get the Ram box. So that was important to me. I like the idea of outside storage like that that you can lock up. Of course, I got it because it's a pickup truck, and uh, this one has a tonneau cover soft top you can't lie on this or anything like that but you know i will flip this open real quick for you guys to take a look at it you can flip this open you could uh, strap it down one of the cool things about this i think it's already dropped all the way down but this has an air suspension system so you could drop it down lower if you want i think that uh let me see here. I think it's already down. Just looking at it from here, but let's try. So, on the key, you can auto start this. And you can also, if you press this twice, you can drop it down lower. Let's see. I think it's, I think it's at the bottom already. See, it's flashing. Oh, it's not. You can drop down even lower than that. might want to come out to show what it's doing so it's it's dropping down here a little bit lower you can see here it's lower I will I'll do some video of me putting it up all the way when I get inside and all that kind of stuff but if you need to, to get on there easier so like let's say like an old dude like me and you want to get up there easier you can drop it down if you're putting things in there if Lola wanted to get stuff in there okay now I'm going to climb up in here. 
the one thing about the uh, new Ford Raptor, it actually has like a step and everything that pulls out to help you get up there. But whatevs, I don't have that. Um, you can tell I've already been using the, uh, the pickup bed of this. This one is Rhino Line. Well, it was supposed to be Rhino Line when I bought it from the factory. But, um, you know, I had a couple of issues with the particular one I ordered because I had to order it in order to get the RAM box. So what I test drove at the dealership um, did not have the RAM box. And so that all that stuff, this stuff had to get ordered. They said they found one for me and I closed the deal and everything. And then they apparently sold that to someone else, had to get another one. And in the middle of all that, the Rhino lining disappeared. So the uh, dealership took care of that for me and they Rhino lined it. So this is an aftermarket Rhino lining. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. And check it out, I have used it to do shooting. Maybe we'll do some of that later, but yeah. <laughs> So, I've used it. It's well used. I see some more shell casings back here. I'll take those out right now. Um, and just to show you guys real quick, there's this divider that uh, comes with this particular one. So, it took me a little bit to figure out how this worked exactly. But, what you would do is open it. Open it like, uh, like this. And then wherever you want it to be, you position it in there, then lock it, and now you've got, um, you know, you can divide stuff. So like if you want something to stay here, or something to stay here when you close it, you can do all of that. Okay, so that's the bed. The big reason why I got a pickup truck over anything else, right? I wanted the flexibility, you've been able to throw a bunch of stuff in here throw a few things in here, maybe drive this out on the range, shoot things from the bed of this, as you could tell, you know. So, I've used it a lot, if you're curious. Like, have I used this pickup part of it? Absolutely, right, Lola? We've used it. My, uh, my older son's in college, we used it to take him up there and take stuff, and um, I'm getting back into riding bicycles and all that so we've used it for that we use it to take a bunch of equipment out onto the range so there you go well used another thing that I liked about this particular one this is the crew cab so sailor move your little butt over this way come on let me do this let me do this okay so this is the crew cab so there's a lot of space you know and I did that whole test where like you get in to the driver's seat, push it all the way back, and then see if you can sit behind yourself. Cause you know, I want the kids to be able to be in here and they're not even kids anymore. They're like grown ass men and they're as tall or taller than I am. So I did all that test. And if you, uh, if you come in here, I'll show you, I'll try to move these things around a little bit. Actually, you know what? Let me move these to the back. That'll make all this easier. Very, very roomy. I'm gonna move this seat back in a second and roll that in for you guys. This is, uh, it's pretty roomy in the back. That's what I was trying to show you guys. And one of the, the things that I like about the seats now here, you know, obviously you got the head, the uh, armrest you could pull down, the cup holders, and uh, the backrests are adjustable. This one has the uh, red trim, as you'll notice. And like I was saying, you can actually fold up the seat like that. Check that out. So if you just push that seat up, Lola, just push it up, see that whole thing folds up and then you have more room back here. And if you guys will notice that these actually, this is like a, like a stand. You can flip this over and then you have a platform here. You know, interestingly, it goes around the, uh, the cup holders right there. This has like its own built-in cup holder. So if you wanted to just store stuff back here, you could actually, you have lots of room to store things if you don't have someone back here. And I'm guessing it could carry a lot of weight, so you could probably, you know, probably lie down back there if you really wanted to. Now, if we flip it back, and uh, it has straps. So if you notice, there's, yeah, so you flip that down. Now, here's one of the cool things. 
I think this one, if you lift it, uh, the strap, it probably has the strap on it. There you go. So there you go, right? And this one, I think, too, has a strap. So you lift this up, there's actually storage in there. And then that's the uh, subwoofer and all that. So there's actually pretty good sound in here. You know, that's cool. I like the fact that there's storage under here, too. That was cool. This vehicle has like the most storage that I've seen in a pickup truck. So yeah, Lola is flipping those up. So you'll notice there are other storage containers right here. <laughs> um, this is like some part of the trim. But this is actually like an ice bucket. So you can put ice or drinks or whatever with ice in here. And then you could take that out. And uh, see, same thing over on Lola's side. Or you could put ammo, guns, whatever, whatever you want to put in there. I like that. That's a that's a cool part of this. This one also came with these with the mud mats, which I think is cool. And then here you can put these down. And there's the uh, there's the strap to strap it back down, keep it in place. And then back here, you've got uh, vents for air conditioning and your 12 volt. There you go. So you can plug things in there. All right, so lots of room back here. Excuse me. Lots of room back here. And if you come up here with me, Lola, it also has, if you look up on the ceiling, there's the indentations back here to make it roomier. And then there's speakers and everything. This, this vehicle, I think, has really good sound, in my opinion. There's also hooks back here for clothing or whatever you want to do back there. So that's nice. Um, lots of storage pockets. There's one. And then, you know, here's a little one nice grab handles that's cool so let me just show you if you come up here Lola so I think that my seat if you look at the seat it's not all the way back and um, here I'll actually get Lola to help me sh help show you guys this so check it out so I'm gonna go in here and um, you know the seat I, if you watch I'm actually, I should be able to go back. Okay, so that's it. It wasn't, I, it didn't have that far to go back. But I don't, usually in a vehicle, I have to put the seat all the way back because my legs are kind of long. Really the bigger problem for me is my arms are really long. And I like driving like this. I'm not a fan of uh, driving like in this position where my arms are more bent or whatever. I don't know. I don't know if you guys have that problem. But I did this test. The seat is all the way back. And then, check it out, I'm gonna get in here. Behind myself, this room. And this is actually reclined. You know, so if you look at this, you could tell that this is actually a little bit reclined, but look at that. So I can sit behind me. You know, that is a big deal to me, at least. I know that's probably not a big deal to everyone out there. Maybe there's some shorties out there that aren't worried about it but that was like a big deal to me let's take a look at the engine i like the whole look of this too the rebel it had a really aggressive look and i think that um with with ram what they did was with their regular 1500 they knew that people bought it i'm not saying they were directly trying to compete with the raptor but they know people bought the 1500 and then went and did a whole bunch of different things right you know you did all these upgrades so you buy a vehicle and then you'll take it to like a, a truck shop somewhere and then they'll add all these things. So I think what they wanted to do with this rubble with the whole trim and how it looks is save you that. So you buy this and you don't have to go do a whole bunch of those things. So the whole trim and everything looks good. There's actually like tow hooks up here. I think the power wagon actually has a wench and everything up front. This doesn't, but I like the aggressive look of it and then bear in mind right now we have this the suspension dropped all the way down so I, uh, I have not even opened this too often so here we go there we go well here goes the engine the v8 the uh, 5.7 liter just so you guys see I mean it, it's still looking clean I haven't really uh, abused it at all this is the filter box here um, probably I could upgrade that there's my nice big beefy battery there's lots of room in this engine compartment maybe room for a supercharger Lola no awesome no, no. no. okay some some turbos maybe what for? 
This car already takes off really fast. Like a it's not powerful car. enough, woman. <laughs> so anyway, it's got these uh, struts and everything that's holding it up. So that's cool. There you go. Um, so just taking a look around here. I think that this uh, this is probably like one of the higher end trims that you would get out of the Rebel. Here's the passenger side. Lots of pockets in here. This uh, this glove box is actually two glove boxes, believe it or not. So one, you got one right there. That's where I keep my glasses and stuff. And two right there. This is where all the manuals and all of that will live. You got side pockets. You got lots of pockets here, places in the door where Lola automatically stored her stuff to my annoyance. You know, I know that's weird, but I don't like people storing stuff in my, uh, in my vehicle. I'm the only one that's supposed to decide what goes in there. And then just really quick from this side, so this armrest, you can open it like that, then it opens like that. More storage, there's storage there, there's storage here. You can actually put your phone in here as you guys will see me do that. There's like a little pocket up here that you can put your glasses. There's just a lot of storage in this thing, man. That's really one of the big things that, uh, that I personally liked about it. And the trim, as you can see, it's got the red trim all around it. It's also more plugs in here. Yeah, there's a bunch of plugs in there for your phone, USB. You know, all that kind of good stuff is in there. And uh, there's a coin thing. I don't know who keeps coins on them, but that's a coin thing. I guess there's people who, who need the coin thing. Uh -uh, I don't know. Don't use the coin thing, Lola. I don't, I don't keep change. There you go. Um, just to show you guys what I have in here. I've got a manual in here. And uh, yeah, it's pretty deep. I've got like my backup uh, gate opener. Keep some earplugs in there in case I need them. So one of these days I'll do something on what do I keep in here for emergency situations. I like the fact that there's uh, handles on here to help you climb up when you're short like Lola. You I like the step need that. bar. Not that I don't use it because I do. I like the step bar too. And uh, yeah, on that side of the driver, if you look behind you, there's another thing that you can. I mean, you can use it if you're going in there. Oh, that's for the back, though. Yeah, that's for the back. And then see here, there's another one. So when you're climbing in, you've got grab handles and everything to get in. So it's pretty cool. Got this texture um, in the seat. Huh? So you've got this ram texture in the yeah, seat. Yeah, this too. has, yeah, this, the pattern that you guys see in here, that's actually the tires, believe it or not. So. I didn't cover that. These are the tires are 33s, and I think the rims are 17s. And uh, they're Toyo Open Country, as you can see. So the same pattern that are on the tires, that's the pattern that's on the seats. So check that out. And then, of course, like I said, not all of them come with this red trim, but that's an upgrade that you get here. That's kind of an upgrade I got since the. Uh, these guys didn't have the original vehicle that I bought. They weren't able to deliver it to me. So here you go. If you want to just hold that. So there's a there's a couple of things that I should probably point out before we go for a drive that I think are batshit crazy. So antenna, crazy. I don't understand why it needs an antenna there because I don't know if you can see that, but over there, Lola, there's a fin. So that's already an antenna, but for some crazy reason, <laughs> these guys need to put a, uh, they need to put two antennas. They say that's for the, for the radio, and then I guess this one is for the satellite. Don't, I don't really believe that. I think that's a little bit of nonsense. I don't really think you need it. It's like 2017, why do you have to have a big CB looking like antenna? On your thing um, there's a bunch of things here I don't think I'm even gonna get everything a bunch of things about the trim level that I like like the turning mirror indicators all that you see that on other vehicles um, I pointed out the uh, the tow hooks up front and it's got fog lights and everything very nice um, the LED headlights are cool and some vehicles that are out there that's all like an upgrade and then 
like I said, the sporty look in here is cool, but this is not functional because um, Ram says it's like the air going through there actually kills the aerodynamics. I've noticed that I've gotten between 17 and 18 miles per gallon um, on the highway with this, usually like 17 driving around town. But that's the same thing with the Forerunner that we have. So I don't know about the Tundra, but I think it's the same thing. Okay, Lola, you stand off and I'm gonna raise this up. So you just stand off for a second and I'm gonna get in here and push it all the way up and show you guys how far it goes up. The high, I'm gonna put it up to the highest mode that's for off-road. So here we go. So I think right there it's all the way up, right? Looks like it's all the way up, you know. It's about an inch and a half or something like that. It's not like a massive lift. I honestly don't need a massive lift, but this is the off-road setting. So when we're driving, you guys will see, like once I get up to a certain speed, it starts flashing and then it'll come down to the most aerodynamic thing that it needs to be. And um, you know, the off-road is the highest mode that you can go in. If you're going off-road and you're going at a certain speed, it'll stay there. Once you start going faster, it drops down a little bit and then as you get on the highway and you get even faster it will drop down to into whatever is the most aerodynamic stance for it to be in and you know that's something that I think that's cool okay so you know what Lola do you want to take these guys for a spin how about we do that okay so let's do that now Come on, women, let's go for a drive. Yeah, so one of the things I really liked about this is the the uh, interface here, you know, the user interface. It's a lot like the Challenger, and uh, that's something Chrysler has really upgraded, a nice big screen and lots of control. So there's like dual climate control going on here, and you have access to that, you know, by touch, by these buttons and everything, but you also have access in here. It's got a bunch of different apps inside of it I won't go into that lots of people do it you can have access to your backup camera without actually being in backup mode and I think it stays on you can you can have it on up to a certain speed so even here when I go into climate controls for the heated seat this is just uh, heated seats right and heated steering wheel the Challenger has like heated and cooled but this is, has um, this has that and then you can also go to the backup camera so that's kind of cool to have it all in there and um, it's got navigation built in and you know access to your phone and different media that you have I haven't connected my phone or anything like that yet like I said down here you could actually um, here I'll plug my phone in so you could plug your phone and then you can actually put it in here to charge and all that kind of stuff right now, the, a weird thing, I like the start stop and the remote allows you to start it remotely. You can even start it from, um, from, your, from, the, from the iPhone app and all that kind of good stuff. That's really cool. I, I like a lot of these things. You know, you've got an actual power plug up here. You know, lots of good pockets and all that. The, a big complaint that I have with this, I mean, this is very luxurious for a pickup truck, right? And I think people in America right now are demanding uh, more and more luxury out of their pickup truck. The price of this thing, you know, in the, the upper 40s, it's like Mercedes or BMW category, right? So I think that's all good. If you notice right now, the setting that, I, that I've got it on here, I can show you guys. So if you see here, it's all all these lights are lit up here right so I don't know if you could tell it's not let me see if I get it to focus the sun's down yeah I'm trying to get it to focus here let me just switch and make it a manual focus for a second then maybe I might get so there you go all right so I've got it on the manual focus so you see these lights this would be all the way down this is all the way up and then so what that means is when you come over here let me see uh, so here's the same thing right so you see it says off-road mode right so 
that's the highest level. I'm gonna put it back to autofocus, give it back to Lola. Um, that's just my phone. Don't worry about it. All right, so a big complaint. I know it gives me a lot of room. There's a lot of room here. Someone can actually sit. This um, this is so big and comfortable. You can actually sit another person on this if you really, really, really needed to. Obviously, there's no seat belts or anything, so that's great. So there's no shifter up here, and then usually on pickup American pickup trucks, at least, you have like a shifter over here. This one, here's the shifter right here. So this is how you go into reverse drive, rev uh, park, reverse neutral, and drive from here. That's how you do it. That is very interesting. <laughs> and believe you me, it's close here close enough to my volume button that I've gone to turn up the volume on this thing and like you know and and gone over there so I don't know what happens if I'm in uh, let me see if I'm dr in drive and I go to turn up the volume obviously it's not gonna do anything but if I'm in drive that's what I worry about like if I'm moving but I don't know if there's any safety thing for that I really have not been brave enough to try that out yet and um, the same thing goes for all the um, the, the four-wheel drive stuff in here as well, right? So it's all down here. I'm in two-wheel drive right now. You can go to neutral, or this light indicates neutral. You can go to four-wheel drive low, four-wheel drive lock. You do that all here, whereas, mm -hmm. for example, in the, uh, in the forerunner that we have, there's actually like things you got to shift it into to do it it's all electronic it's all here this is more of like a European style um, shifting going on with this stuff so we'll see how that works out and here's another thing that I could point out to you guys so the uh, the back window there you can um, this is the control for it so when I push this so I'm gonna push it the other way here just just get me I'll hit and see that opens it so if you look back there you'll see it's open it's open right now and I'll close it so it's powered you know that's cool one of the things um, when I was looking at Tundra's I believe that you that the whole thing goes down in the back I believe I think that's what it is with the Tundra so that's like a negative this uh, big shifter knob here is kind of a negative to me I am getting more and more used to it but you know it takes time right takes time to be able to do that all right so are you ready to go for a drive okay let's do this all right so I'm gonna go for a little spin pretty much the same test that we did with the forerunner to see whether or not it was actually off-road capable I think we should go do that so that's just like um, what they call down the block here in Florida from where we are <laughs> So I'm going to go down the block to that little spot that we went to. Now, if you want to know if there, if there's any things that I've added to the truck, the only things that I've done so far are tint the windows. And like I said in the beginning of this, the dealership, the, um, the, the bed was supposed to be bedlined and it wasn't. So the dealership paid for it to be bedlined. So you you know you could put that in the aftermarket category something that was done. So now if you give if you look here, if you look it's gone down to normal like I'm doing like 49 miles per hour here, and it's gone down to normal. And then if you look, if you also look there, here you can just pick up my phone, move it out of the way. Here I'll move the phone out so that, so you guys can see this. So it's gone down one notch, right? And just in case you're wondering, if you if you uh, look back up here at this at this screen, um, that little green light in the right down there at the bottom that indicates the eco mode. So this is a V8, and um, it automatically goes to the four cylinders if you're just driving normally. Now, if you decided to pick up and you know put some speed into what you're doing, it picks up. That's this is what I like about it. it just gets up and goes, you know if you want to get up and go but when you're driving normally it'll cut off see like it already uh, it already cut off and if you look down here you'll see that it dropped down another notch so now we're down to only two lights because of the speed that I'm going yeah and that, it's it's also quiet inside the cabin I noticed you know you can definitely um, 
tell that there's like a noise difference. Like right now we're not listening to music or anything like that. Obviously we're making a video, so it wouldn't be a good idea to have the music blasting. But I can tell there's definitely a, um, a nice, quiet, comfortable feel. I know I'm probably gonna say comfortable a lot with this, with this Rebel, but it is very comfortable. So now we're going down, this is like a tight road here, we're going down, yeah. I think they do every now and then have vehicles that come down here and clear up these roads, but not often. So we're, we're approaching right now that area that we tested the Forerunner on before. We're approaching that, we're in two wheel drive. I'm gonna drive right up into it there and see at what point we get stuck and how the four wheel drive system works for us. So here we go, you guys can see it right there. All right, this is the spot. I mean, you could tell just by looking at it. You pull a car in here, you'll get stuck and you know, people bring their vehicles here to test them out. So oh, there we go, so we're stuck already. You know, obviously I'm, I'm not always, you know, pro reading the manual, but it's telling me what I need to do. So to shift into four wheel drive low, you need to put it in neutral and then press the button. And that's how it completes the, uh, and then up here it's saying four wheel drive shift. Now it's in there, see the lights not flashing. So that's what you need to do to be four wheel drive low. Okay, so now we're in four wheel drive low. So let's try to go up that hill. Shouldn't be super complicated to do it. Let's, let's see what happens here. We should try, try a different hill. Oh, it still doesn't like this hill in the low. Yeah, so. That rut there that you see, if you look at that, that rut is where it's catching, you know. So let's try, um, let's try a different in the four wheel drive low. Let's try to go up, uh, let's try to go up an easier one. Like I think over there looks like an easier incline. Let's try that. gonna need a nice run at it it looks like hold on okay let's take a let's take a no That's really, really. I'm trying to make sure there's no one here. You're looking, right? Let's take a let's take a run at it from here and see if we can get up this hill. Nope. <laughs> Don't really think so.
Okay, I think you can smell from out there, Lola. I know I could smell it from in here. I could tell the truck's heated up and all that kind of stuff. It's not getting up there, at least not in four-wheel drive low. I'll put it into neutral and try going to four-wheel drive lock. I don't know if that will do anything. Um, let's see. I don't know that if that locks the, the rear diff or what it does, but I am disappointed very disappointed that this is not having such an easy time the forerunner did a lot better than this when we brought it over here so this can obviously drive around here as you can see it's driving around in all these crazy it's beeping because Lola doesn't have her seatbelt on but it's driving around here and all this crazy stuff but okay I think that lock Come on, you can do it. Get up there. Doesn't want to do it in the lock either. Let's take a run at it and see if we put some like momentum behind it. You want to put your seatbelt on, Lola? Yep. So this thing doesn't keep screaming and shouting. Okay, you got it? Mm -hmm. Alright, here we go. Oh my god. Thank you. Father Lord Jesus. Oh, now you're scratching it all up. Look at these weeds. Oh my god. Okay. Well, because I, I had to take at least one attempt at trying to get up here. <laughs> okay. It, at least it got up here. It has saved itself. So in four wheel drive, in, in four wheel drive low, no. But we did bring the forerunner up here. Let me just explain something to you guys, because you guys might not understand this. Lola does not like the forerunner. Right or wrong? She thinks I stuck her with the forerunner for some reason. I do. Yeah, but the but you I can do. you can see how freaking awesome the forerunner is right now, right, Lola? Yeah, it could do this. The forerunners, now this did it and it got up here. This Barely. is my first time trying to do it and it wasn't so easy, you know, it wasn't so easy getting up here. I didn't want to do it in four low. Um, the forerunner did do it in four low, but the forerunner has way more stuff built into it. So like how, when I was in four low, how you can hear that thing spinning. I think we got up here because this is four wheel drive and it's locked. So I think it, I don't know if it locked. I think it locked something. Whatever wheel was spinning out was not spinning out here. So I think in this situation, that's what you would do. And I'm not an expert on four wheel drive at all. So folks out there who are experts will know better than me. You know, I'm just trying to drive this truck up here to prove whether or not my pickup truck can actually climb up this thing. And it can, it climbed, it climbed up. Barely. So no, I give it props. What, you want me to go down and climb back up again? No, thank you. Yeah. One time is enough. So, um, you know, this is a big, massive luxury vehicle. This is a lot heavier than the 4Runner. The 4Runner is pretty nice. But I think the difference with the 4Runner and probably with the Tundra and all that would be the 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 system that's built into it to uh, go off road is probably easier to use. This is this is simplified. That's more complicated, but complicated probably for a good reason. And it was a lot easier for me to get up because those systems know what to do if this thing is slipping and all that. When this doesn't necessarily do it, but it got up here. It's just I realized I have to put it into four wheel drive lock, for whatever that does. Yeah, user. So. Okay. so user error. So uh, maybe user error. So. But you know, the Forerunner also has that assist. It drives itself up the hill and down the hill. Yeah, so let's try to go down now. And let's see how that goes. Let's go down. I will go down and come back up one time. So now I'm just going down the hill and the four wheel drive. But there's no assist or anything in this. So this is just yeah. gonna go down the hill. Right. Yeah, there we go. It's going down the hill. All right. Man, it's no big deal. All right. We could drive around. So I think what you have to do, let's try to go up that thing and I lock get out and, and see. You going up? Now let's see what happens here if we try to go up this one. That pit there's not. See it doesn't want to it doesn't want to do this one. This one's too steep for it. As you guys can tell, it's really too steep. I don't know if it's that or if it's that dent that, that it created trying Whoa. to go up before. 
You see that dent that I created trying to go up before? Yeah, I'm trying to make sure there's no one coming down the road. So I'll try to miss those. And yeah, we actually, let me way. go back a little further and try to do it. Let's see if we can do it in this. I think you might have to go more left and try to yeah, avoid that. I'll try to do that. Okay, let's uh, let's give a run at it and see what happens. It's digging in. I think you might have fallen into that. Um, yeah, I, I avoided it and we climbed up a little bit here, but no, nah, it doesn't want to do it. <laughs> All right, that one is too steep, I think, at least for my skill level. I think, I think if it was solid, it would go, yeah. it would make it. Okay, if do that you? sand was solid, it would make it. Yeah, that's, you know. Because it's too dug in. Yeah, so. right there you're really getting stuck. That's where you would need something probably in this vehicle to do it. We don't have the forerunner here today to see if under these circumstances the forerunner will get up there. Okay, so I'm going to try to do go up there again. Do you want to get out or? Yeah, I'll get out. say going up that steeper one has defeated me. Excuse me. Alright, let me say that again. I think at this point I'm going to say going up that steeper one has defeated me, Lola. Alright, get in. I think we know the capabilities somewhat. I think we're good. Alright, so there you go. My uh, initial video of the Ram Rebel 1500 2017 and uh, you know, I think not bad. It is a big, heavy pickup truck, of course, and uh, it had a little bit of trouble getting up that sandy climb, the really steep incline over there. So, and obviously, I have to take time to figure it out. I think that four wheel drive lock is probably what you want to use if you're in slippery situations like that. And with that, it was able to get up the less um, severe incline, was able to go up and down. So, that's cool. I mean, I think that some vehicles could do better, but when you balance it out with all the luxury stuff that I'm gonna use most of the time, I think I'm happy with this until I see something else. Maybe if I saw something else out there that could give me all the luxury and then still have the off-road capabilities of let's say like a Jeep Wrangler or something like that. Maybe even a, a Jeep Wrangler if they get bigger because the space means the most to me in most situations that I'm in. I want the person sitting behind me to be comfortable. I want to be able to move around with a bunch of stuff and then have all the nice amenities and tech that I want. So there you go. I will do more videos on this, rest assured. And uh, we're heading off to SEMA here. So there's going to be more car stuff coming to you guys. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks to you. Thanks to Lola for running the camera for me there. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. I am out.